Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of an IRNH Turanian individual from Tajikistan, actually around the border of Tajikistan and Afghanistan. Uh, this individual was a uh, was a part of the Iranic Iranian speaking culture who lived in this region in the Iron Age. Let's go ahead and explore uh, the results with my trait predictor. So first for the haplogroup, it looks like this individual's Y DNA is R2, so the descent is F to P to R to R2. Uh, he's scoring. He's actually got one R1A variant out of four out of eight total, but that's not enough for uh, the prediction to say R1A. It looks like he's got R haplogroup for sure, but he's got five R2 variants out of five total, so he's definitely got R2 haplogroup. All right, we're gonna start with. I guess the ethnic calculator portion would be a good place to start. We're gonna start with my ethnic calculator results. So with my ethnicity calculator, he's scoring closest to Assyrians, Hispanics, uh, Turks, actually Yamnans from Kalmykia, followed by that is Turkic from the Caspian Steppe, followed by that is Sarmatian from the Urals, followed by that is Neolithic farmer from Britain, followed by that is Anatolian Iron Age. So it looks like he's uh, definitely shifted more towards the Mediterranean here. Assyrians definitely shifted more towards Mediterraneans and Middle Eastern people. Uh, we're going to compare that, and this is done with 343 SNPs, so it's obviously uh, 343 SNPs is not enough to accurately tell you, uh, to precisely tell you what ethnicity you are in terms of like Assyrian versus um, uh, versus Tajik, for example, right? Because these are both West Eurasian populations. The difference between these populations is very little. To find that difference, you have to analyze a lot more SNPs than 343. So with GED match, we can compare that actually with Pond DNA LK12. In this case, it's 25k SNPs. So you can, it's it's what it's 75 times more SNPs going into this result. So it's, with this result, uh, it's going to be a lot more precise and it's going to be a lot better at determining the actual ancestry, determining the actual group this individual falls into. Let's click on the Oracle, and he's closest to Kurds, Kurdish, followed by Iranian, followed by Turkish. So I guess it is actually sort of close to what my ethnic calculator is saying because Assyrian, Hispanic, and Turkish is right here. So it's I guess it's kind of close, actually, uh, ironically, to what my ethnic calculator is predicting for him. But it's look it looks like the first population is Kurdish, Iranian, Turkish, Chechen, Kumik, basically Caucasus and uh, north of Mesopotamia groups. He's actually getting more of the mixture of Makrani plus Ashkenazi Jew or Iranian plus Tajik Pamiri. So there is definitely a shift towards uh, the west, the western portion, and towards um, basically uh, places like Greece and Sicily and Jews because they all cluster in the same place relative to the you know Tajiks or South Central Asians. All right, let's see what he scores with Pandi with Eurogenski thirteen. Uh, let's click on the Oracle, and here he is closest to Kumyks, Lesgins, the Basaran, and Chechens. So he's closest to various Caucasus groups. Once again, Caucasus is a little bit more Western shifted relative to South Central Asians, such as Tajiks or uh, Pamiri people or uh, like Balochi or something like that. And he's getting more as a mixture of Tabasaran plus Iranian or Tabasaran plus Kurdish. Uh, once again, Kurds and Iranians are very much Mediterranean shifted relative to. Um, relative to Baloch and Tajiks. So that's very interesting to see. But there is actually also a South Asian component here because there is line 11, which is Lezgin plus Velamas or Lezgin plus Piramalai, all these uh, South Indian groups as well. So there is some South Indian admixture here. And let's see, what is, what is he scoring? He's scoring 11.8% South Asian. Uh, it's a very South... There, there's some South Indian admixture here in this individual, which, which probably he picked up from Harappan or yeah, basically Harap and admixture. Uh, this individual doesn't have any East Asian or Siberian or just 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 a little bit of a Meridian admixture, but there is no Turkic Turkic presence here. Unlike the previous uh, Xirov H Hoshan individual I've done a video on, who have who was scoring, I think, 10% Siberian plus East Asian in total. Uh, for Pond DNA LK12, we can see he's actually scoring 11.5% European Hunter Gatherer. This is two times less than what the previous individual from Xirov H Hoshan was scoring. So this individual is also a lot less European hunter-gatherer. Uh, I think it's also a lot more Anatolian Neolithic farmer and Caucasus hunter-gatherer. It's just a lot, it's a lot more typical. This result is a lot more typical, I would say, uh, than what we saw with the previous individual from Xirov H. Kushan. So let's go ahead and explore what he scores with Nashakwat. 
Uh, it looks like with Nashakot, he is scoring brown eyes or hazel eyes. Most likely, eye color for him is brown or hazel. Uh, although there is also a possibility of darkest brown and blue eyes with a neighbor center, that's also within the realm of possibility. possibility. For hair color, he's scoring dark brown hair, but light brown is also kind of possible. Uh, black hair is also kind of possible. Dark blonde hair is even possible here, but most likely his hair color is dark brown or light brown. Uh, for skin color, it looks like he's scoring olive or Mediterranean skin tone, although white skin for him is also possible. For hair texture, he's actually predicted to have kinky hair. Well, kinky or curly or wavy hair, actually. But it's... Um, this file is actually it's high, it's higher quality than the previous file, but it's also not very high quality overall. Uh, it's also not it, it's not that good. It's a lot worse in terms of coverage than what a typical my heritage or twenty three and me or ancestry DNA file would be. So it's still when it comes to stuff like that, it's still not that good. Uh, Nashakot in terms of the the phenotype prediction, it's it's going to be pretty good because it's everything is imputed. If something is lacking from the file, is something if is absent from the file, it's just going to be imputed. So, uh, in regards to Nashakot and the hair, the hair color, eye color, skin color, all that stuff is going to be uh, imputed if it's if it's not present in the file. But for hair texture, I don't do imputation there. Uh, okay, so it looks like he's got heterozygous genotype in BEH3 somehow without having BEH2, which is very surprising. So he's got there's a dislinkage here because he's he's inherited a light allele on BEH3 without one in BEH2. Uh, he has BH1, very interesting, and he does not have BH4, no blue apple type 4. All right. Um, okay, let's go ahead and see what he scores for the polygenic risk scores. So it looks like for the polygenic risk scores, he's got a slightly above average score for schizophrenia. He's got a slightly above average score for type 2 diabetes. He's got a below average score for Alzheimer's, and he's got a below average score for multiple sclerosis. Really interesting to see. Well, it's below average, but it's kind of really close to average, to be honest. Uh, for the cancer section, he's got four risk variants for breast cancer out of eight, which is really surprising. But then again, uh, it's single digit numbers, right? Eight, you don't want to see single digit numbers here. And if you took, and I will repeat myself again, if you took a 23andMe or Ancestry or MyHeritage, you will not see single digit numbers here. You will see a number like 30 out of 30 out of 40. Uh, in this case, we're seeing out of eight. That's because this sample is not very high quality. Uh, three risk variants for testicular cancer out of 12. Kind of typical. Two risk variants for celiac disease out of six. Uh, actually, really atypical. But once again, it's 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 low quality prediction, low quality coverage. Zero for GSS out of six. All right, that's typical. Uh, four out of for Crohn's disease out of 14. Actually, that's kind of that's kind of atypical. We're gonna find out why that is. Zero for Reifenstein's out of two, all right, and zero for Parkinson's out of six. All right, let's go ahead and explore his monogenic traits. So it looks like he's got Eugene's variation of Comte, which is typical for most humans, at least to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. Unfortunately, Warrior versus Warrior is not for Comte is not found in this file. This is a big bummer. Uh, for MAOA, this individual got this genotype, which leads to higher MAOA enzyme activity. So that looks like he's Wadi. Or in MAOA, at least we know this. So what your in MAOA comped, unfortunately, is unknown. Uh, for the no-go learner variation in, in DRD2, it looks like he's got uh, heterozygous genotypes, so one derived no-go learner variant. Uh, he's got GG in TAC1, which looks like a slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, and no uh, A1 allele, which would greatly reduce the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Um... Okay, and it looks like he does not have long form 5 HTTLPR. Once again, he's got short form 5 HTTLPR, slightly higher odds of depression, uh, some trouble transporting serotonin. Most people have short form 5 HTTLPR, just like this individual. For mental health results, for autism only, it looks like he's got all typical genotypes that lead to slightly higher risk of autism. Uh, for lactose persistence, it looks like he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. If you took an ancestry test, they would say, hey, you're lactose intolerant. Uh, he's got this genotype, which leads to <coughs> uh, increased OXTR expression and higher levels of empathy. Really interesting genotype to have. I normally don't see CC here. It's actually kind of rare. Okay. Uh, for diabetes, it looks like he does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see. For hemochromatosis, it looks like he's not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation. For Alzheimer's, it looks like no risk variance for Alzheimer's in APOE. This is not a particularly important variation. For multiple sclerosis, 
uh, no risk guidance for MS and HLA gene, which is by far the most important gene for multiple sclerosis risk, but he's got this genotype, which means two common, um, two common risk guidance for MS. For cardio cardiovascular disease panel, it looks like he uh, has this genotype, which leads to higher odds of brain aneurysm and heart attack. Very interesting. But all of the other genotypes actually are good. All of the other genotypes are leading to a lower risk of coronary heart disease and heart disease in, in general. Uh, for myopia, it looks like he's got AA here, which leads to slightly increased risk of myopia or nearsightedness. And CC here, which also leads to higher odds of myopia. But unfortunately, uh, this is not enough to make any sort of prediction based on because there is there is a lot more that you would typically see with a high quality file. Like if you ran a Cheddarman genome, I have Cheddarman genome on my computer, I can show you his result. Uh, if you run Cheddarman genome, you're going to see like like seven. You're, okay. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna see maybe six or seven times more content generated compared to a file like this, so that tells you a lot about the quality of the file. For miscellaneous section, this individual has got higher IQ, uh, likely higher fo likely has folic sneeze, re sneeze reflex, uh, no variance for increased sensitivity in SCN9A. It looks like no East Asian EDAR either. Um, we're gonna skip drug response. Familiar Mediterranean fever, only one variant was, variation was found in the file, and he doesn't have any risk variants there. For MTHFR panel, it looks like he's got um, this genotype, actually, which is kind of atypical, and it leads to a number of risks associated with impaired polyp metabolism, cancer, cleft lip, dementia, arthritis, heart disease risks, everything like this. Uh, for cancer's panel, it looks like there's two risk variants for breast cancer here and here, uh, which are kind of rare, kind of uncommon. But he has this genotype, which leads to six times reduced risk of testicular cancer. He probably does not have testicular cancer. Probably does not have a very high risk score for that if you uh, take everything into account, because this is a very important genotype. Okay. Uh, for leukemia, it looks like he does not have leukemia. Doesn't have any risk variance for that. For rare diseases panel, it looks like he's got this genotype, which leads to higher risk of certain autoimmune disease, diseases, such as type 1 diabetes or uh, Addison's. For celiac disease panel, it looks like he does not have any risk variance in HLA, which is by far the most important gene for celiac disease. And I remember the score for celiac disease was pretty typical too. Uh, for allergies panel, we're going to skip that. Actually, I don't really care about this. For androgen receptor gene, it looks like he's got this genotype, which is very typical, no androgen insensitivity. Uh, unfortunately, none of the other really important stuff that's in the AR gene is found in this file. But by, by the way, uh, the AR gene is going to contain data on there's a variation there that determines how likely you are to go bald, which is pretty cool, like lose your hair. Uh, unfortunately, this is not in this file, and this is not going to be in this result. I would really like to find out. They should do a higher coverage genome sequencing for this individual, for, for this skeleton, because that would be very interesting to see. For Crohn's disease panel, it looks like he does not have, he has a typical lower risk of Crohn's disease. For Canavan syndrome, it looks like zero risk variance out of Everything that was found, really good to see. And for HIV and AIDS panel, it looks like he does not have the protective variations, the protective variants that protect against HIV. Uh, once again, really interesting to see. For muscular dystrophy, it looks like he does not have any risk variants for that. But unfortunately, it's just not a very high quality file. As you can see, you can see once again, zero total. That's not good. Uh, if you have a commercial DNA test, you have a commercial DNA file, you're going to see, I think it's 30 or something. 25 or to 30 total is the typical uh, amount you would see. But in this case, it's out of zero total. So it's just not a very high quality file. Well, thanks for watching until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format from the link which is in the description of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content. And goodbye.